Good evening. Come on in. And make sure you share it to your pages. I'm Dr. Jewel Williams. I'm James Williams. The pastors of Abundant Life Worship Center at 7701 South Exchange between Chicago, Illinois, and the lovely South Shore neighborhood. Welcome to our Wednesday work. I'm going to do like I did last week and cut it off. I'm ready to cut it off. We're still doing our lesson now. How to go on when I want to give up. And today we're talking about who will answer your call or your prayer. Amen. I need God to answer my prayer. I do too. So welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, let's get started. Amen, amen again. Amen. I am Dr. Jewel Williams, and this is Pastor James Williams. We're the Passive Abundant Life Worship Center. So we're talking about how to go on when I want to give up. And so we've been just walking through pieces of scripture to really just give us some encouragement. So we're going to do the same thing today. So we just want to greet everybody as you come in. Um, and again, remember, we are recording this. And so we are monitoring it in the, the, the chat. So even though it's pre-recorded, we are right there watching it with you. So we want to jump into our first scripture. Let me. And that is Psalms 120 and 1. It says, in my distress, I've called to the Lord and he answered me. Uh, that's a small piece of scripture, but it's got a lot of meat to it. So, Pastor James, I'm going to just let you start. What's the first thing that that particular scripture is kind of saying to you? Well, one, that God is ever ready at, to um, to hear our cries. and the piece that um, stands out to me is the last part where it says he he answered me. And, you know, when we are in either personal distress or maybe someone in our family or a friend or saying or whatever is in, in distress and we call on the Lord, we, we want to hear an answer. Mm -hmm. And most people, myself included, we have a way that we we know we know what we want to hear right. sometimes, and so we we really um, uh, in our humanness want to bend you know God into answering it the way I want mm -hmm. it to be answered. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's natural a natural yeah. human tendency. And at the same time, I also believe that sometimes that answer comes in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know. The Lord can change any situation that he ordains to be changed, mm -hmm. you know, according to his will. Yeah. And so sometimes it, the answer will be addressing that situation. Mm -hmm. The other times I believe the answer is is really helping me and I will speak for myself, help me change my perspective on how I'm looking at it and change what it means to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes that means I have to get acceptance for what is happening in my life or in the life of those that I'm praying for. Sometimes it means I, I, I need to just change the way I'm perceiving it. Sometimes right. I might think it's a it's a grave calamity, mm -hmm. but it may be something that, you know, God is allowing to happen right. so that he can wake up either me or others right. to our necessity of relying on him for everything. Um, Mm -hmm. So just that my the way I perceive things and the and the way I'm I, I it, and, and what that means to me sometimes God changes that you know yeah. I might be in a panic or like oh and mm -hmm. God is like son mm -hmm. this is this is this is the way it's going to be right and and you have a role your more role might not be to I mean your role might your role is prayer mm -hmm. And, and sometimes it's accepting that these these are these are the way things will be. That doesn't mean that I don't hope and pray for sure. the best. It's not that I lose 
what I'm praying for. Like if I'm praying for somebody's healing or my own healing, right. I don't lose faith in that. Right. I just have to recognize that God has the final say and he has the final word. That's good. And that's a, that was meaty too, what you just said. Let me I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna pick up on the last thing you said. You said like, for example, you know, maybe you, you desire healing. Um, and sometimes I think that's the place where we can really feel like God has let us down. So, you know, you've prayed for uh, people to be healed. I know we pray for people to be healed of COVID, but some didn't. Um, and so you could have this feeling like, well, God, did you hear me? Um, why didn't you answer it the way that I wanted to? Uh, and But the truth is we have to understand that, that God did hear, he did answer, but his answer was different than we thought. They received, that person received their healing. It just wasn't in the natural in this in this realm, they right. may have received that that healing spiritually. Now there is no more pain. They're not you know not dealing with any more right. issue. But that's not what the way we wanted it. Right. But what I appreciate, even in that, I, I can apply that to because even in that, that might be my distress. In my distress, my distress might be I don't even understand the the why you answered the way you answered before. Sure. My distress might be that. Things aren't going the way that I thought they did. I've been obedient to you, but why am I still suffering? Why am I still in this place? And I, I appreciate that whatever your distress is, the, the key is to follow that next piece was where the psalmist says, I call to the Lord. So in my distress, even if I feel like, Lord, you part of the distress, you're not answering my, you didn't answer the way I wanted to, but he's big enough to be able to say, daughter i will give you the answer because not only i see that two ways not only is he answering and coming to deal with your distress but i also see the answer is he's giving you an answer he's answering the question of your heart um he's giving you revelation as to the why you are going through or the the understanding so when we're ready to give up that we can know that he's going to give us those answers. Amen. They may not always be what we want, but we'll get those answers. And I think that's key for us as the children of God to just really, um, you know, handle that. I had earlier, how is God answering your prayer? Because sometimes we don't think God is answering because as you were saying, we don't hear it the way we think, right. but he really is answering your prayer because God is not one that he will not that he just ignore you he's not hard of hearing where you got to scream look speak a little louder I can't hear you right. you know right. he hears and so he um he really moves and and just really being transparent sometimes the waiting can be really difficult because that can add kind of to your distress you know yeah. if you're asking god to to change a financial situation for example or to change a marriage or to save a child and it and you know you know what normally happens when you start to pray and stuff gets worse right so it starts to feel like well god you you didn't hear me or why am i waiting so long you know that pay that p word that patience can really be um kind of difficult so our distress is not always even just the condition we're going through sometimes to be honest our distress is because we've got to wait on the answer yeah i agree you know um we we're, we're quick to put a time frame on yeah that's when a good we want one. things when we want things to be resolved yeah you know that's so, our socialization yeah so our next scripture is philippians 4 19 and my god will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in christ jesus and that's an another scripture i know people often use that strictly to start talking about finances you know um well you know we only see that as riches as in you know i'm gonna get my money god's you know he's gonna supply what i need financially but that's not the that's not the the wholeness of this scripture. So, what are some of the things the Lord you know showed you in this piece? Well, one the point that you brought out is that it's not all about money. Um, we just happen to be in a society where yeah. that's the currency that we use to yeah. do certain things. So it's really not all about money. And I think this is another scripture that has a, another teaching. He's embedded in it to me. He says, every need of yours according to his riches and glory. And when I think about that, you know, I want a whole lot of things. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I, that's that's part of, you know, my human nature. I want this, I want that, I want, and I want it at a time in the amount that I want it. 
you know. But the fact is, I don't need everything. Mm. I don't need everything I want. Mm. And, you know, if we really honest with ourselves, sometimes the things that we want That's are not cool. the things that, we, that they, they actually run against <laughs> what, what we actually need. Mm -hmm. And so to me, the focus in this scripture is, OK, well, Lord, help me to understand what it is that I need. And that is what I know I can get from you, you know, because if I if I operate in the in the want in the want zone, a I might get what I want and then mm -hmm. not be what God needs for me to be the best me. Right. And then also I'm spending a whole lot of energy, you know, God giving energy on on, on wants as opposed to focusing on, on on specific needs. And so, not to say that I will, you know. And am good with like not having anything that I want. Right, per se. right, right. But to me, this just makes me think about okay, when things, when I do look at all of the things that I want, I do have to at times like boil it down to the things that I need so that I can stay grounded. Yeah. Um, that's not dealing with the other pieces, but that's just a, 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 a teaching point for me from this particular scripture that I that I need to separate my needs from wants. Yeah. Um, the other pieces are you know his riches and glory, and you know, I, I, I look at that as, you know, God is love. Yeah. And so I need that love in my life. And that's that's something that I can get from God all the time, unconditionally, whether I'm messing up or not, God mm -hmm. is going to love me. Now, his love might might manifest itself in correction. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of, of the, the, the kingdom and biblical you know relationship that I have with him. But I can always get love and comfort from God, um, no matter what. And yeah. so that's that's one big piece yeah. that I get out of this. I'm, I'm curious about what. Oh what yeah, I mean that was really good, and I like that. You know, need versus you know, wants. Um, and it's not. And again, I don't think the scriptures even saying that God doesn't give you some of the wants. But right. I think part of it is, it it has a lot to do with Him changing. First of all our wants, some of our, cause some of our wants may not be in line with him. So True. God will help us to rightly even align our wants, but he is the supplier even of that. Right. But I appreciate, you know, that the scripture is saying that it's, it's telling us who the source is. Right. So God is going to be the source. Um, and, and, and where it's coming from, it, he's the source, but it's coming because of the riches that come through Christ. Right. And so that there's so that that really talks about connection, that there's got to be a connection in my life to God through Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's got to be that connection because that's the that's the spout, so to speak, of how the blessings are going to flow. I can't expect to get something outside of the flow that God wants to have. And sometimes I think when we go back to that scripture about in my distress, sometimes I think that's where we're in distress because, for example, I could be like, well, God, you know, I'm going to go get this extra job. So I'm going to work these extra hours because I need some money. So we're trying to fix that according to my supply. And, and so now I'm distressed because now I'm physically tired. I'm not in relationship with my family the way I want to. Maybe I'm not praying, you know, so it causes a lot of other stuff. And then I still could be in this place where my finances aren't really being met because I try to work it out. And so we have to remember that when we feel like giving up, that when we answer, when we call to God, we have to also be willing to listen to his answer. Uh, and that call, excuse me, and that answer is he is going to be the supplier. And so the question has to become how God do you want to supply that need? Um, maybe that 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 supply is going to come through Jesus, but I have to position myself to be able to to receive the way that you want to um to bless me. Amen. And that was really good because I didn't, you know, really think about that when you start talking about needs versus just my wants, um, but really positioning yourself to say, um, God, I, I want to receive what you have for me. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I just got to be in the right position. Yeah. yeah I, I got to be in the right position. So. I got to be in the right position. And then not only being in the right position, but is some of our distress kind of self inflicted? Yeah, because we we yeah, we're trying to I figure want it out. Eight, eight through X, and God is like, you need C, D, and E. <laughs> Can you focus on C, D, and E? 
man, why are you running around here trying to get A through X? You know, I think that it, that does cause some distress because yeah. it's a mismatch between what you want and what you what you spend your time and your in, and your your energy on yeah. versus what what's needed. And then oftentimes you'll find out that what you need what you need sometimes will help you if you if you are working accord according to what God has said you need to do this this and this. Mm -hmm. Then he'll add these other things to right, it. Right. And you might find that, oh, this is much more satisfying because it's coming in a godly way versus me just, you know, going scattering, just trying to get everything I want based on my own, you know, my own power. So I'm not, it's not to your earlier point around like getting a second job or something like it's not like that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of is that what God wants you to do? Is are you focused on what God wants you to do and 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 then following that that trail as yeah. opposed to um well I just know I'm just gonna go on here and grind. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make it happen. You know, God just come on with me as opposed <laughs> to God lead. Yeah. Me. So I think it's just a difference in, in the way that you um, approach these things. And what I was hearing, and I know, I mean, we're still talking about, you know, wanting to, you know, how to deal with wanting to give up. But the thing that I heard, even though she was talking about, are you following the order? Yeah. There's order that comes in this. And so um, some of the giving up, you know, really sometimes has to do with because it's not going in the order we want. Right. And so God is saying, if you do things in the order I want, even if they're difficult because you're following my order, right. I will give you that peace you need to know that you can still go on and that you still um, can have or do or be what it is that um, that he wants. So, so, you know, this lesson kind of went in a different way than I thought it was, but it is good because it's like God is really, you know, what I hear the Lord really talking about through this lesson is, you know, let's deal with that. Some of the reasons why we want to give up. Some of us wanting to give up is because we feel it's too hard. Some of it is discouraged because we're becoming hopeless. Our situation doesn't change. Some of us wanting to give up has to do with we're looking more at what's around us than listening and staying in touch to what right. God is saying. And, and and so part of what I hear him saying is even those things that are distressing you, if we put it in the proper order, which is to bring it to him, he'll give us the answer. He'll give us the answer. If not, And the answer isn't just I'm going to fix your issue. But the answer sometimes is how to walk through the issue, right. how to walk through the difficulty. Um, and then knowing that I am the supplier of the peace, the joy, because remember we talked about everybody just think that's money, but I'm the supplier of the peace, the joy, the strategies, the answers, the, the patience, the ability to wait when you don't want to wait. Right. Um, you know, so he will do all of those things. So that that is really that just right there encouraged me because sometimes it's just like, you know, you do as a human, you go, Lord, I'm doing what you told me to do. I don't understand why it's not happening. But he's saying because your focus has to go back on on the order, following my order. Yeah, and it's simply because it's not happening as fast as I want it to happen. Absolutely. So the next scripture is Luke, the um, 12, the 12, verse six through seven. And it says, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies, yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs on your heads are all numbered. Number, don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Um, so, you know, I think that's pretty cool because you even just talked about it. It's like, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Really, I mean, you know, that we're not talking about two pennies in our time. We're talking about two pennies then. Uh, but still, it was not a lot of money. And so yet, even though um, the, the five sparrows may not have appeared to be worth much, God is saying they are still not forgotten by me. So exactly. when you in these times and places when because most of the time when you want to give up, what, what is going on in your head? What's going on in your mind is you feel like you're feeling worthless, you're feeling like maybe God has forgotten about you, and He's trying to tell us, No, I haven't forgotten. Um, in fact, let me just give you this understanding. Not only have I not forgotten about you, but I know every hair on your head. So if I take the time to know how many individual strands of hair are on your head, you can't don't be afraid because you are worth more than even um, these many sparrows. So I just think that the big point is as that God is saying, you're not forgotten. Amen. 
amen, that you're definitely worth mm -hmm. something to him, mm -hmm. irrespective of what other people may say, yes. think, um, or do. Because sometimes people will act in a way or say something or think in a certain way. And then we tend to internalize that we are less than. Mm -hmm. And what I what I what I hear here is that, you know, we gotta remember we are more than a conqueror, that we are a child of God, that God each of us has has individual worth that God knows us. And then, you know, just hearkening back to, you know, when, when God created created man or created people, we said this is very good. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just an encouragement for us to retain our um, God given um, character of worth mm -hmm. to him and irrespective of what other people say, do, or think. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just an encouragement. So it's like, man, even if things are all jacked up, you know, you don't get the promotion, people don't select you, you're yeah. not selected for the team, you're not magna cum laude, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you don't have, you know, four million dollars in the bank or whatever mm -hmm. in your investment portfolio. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff really matters to God. Um, in terms of your wealth, your, your your worth to him as a as a child of God in the kingdom of God. So wherever you are, because yeah. we all are human, we're going to compare ourselves to yeah. this, that, and the other. And, you know, some comparison is not inherently bad yeah. just to help you understand where you stand mm -hmm. in the human realm. Right. But in the spiritual realm, you are always worth. You yeah. are always a worthy servant of God a worthy child of God by creation and prayfully that you'll be a, a, a disciple of Jesus Christ by decision and, and his grace and mercy to bring you into the kingdom um, beyond just your creator. But then now you have connection to the Holy Spirit. So you go, you worth something. Yes. And that's, that's, that's the thing, you know, people have to understand that they're worth something, that they have yes. hope. And then that's that hope that helps you get back to, you know, the, the larger theme of, you know what, I'm still God's child. I'm worth something. I'm going to make it. I'm going to push through. God, help me. Lead me, guide me, and 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 provide me whatever it is that I need in order right. to take that next step. Yeah, and some you said, you know, like you said, okay, you may not have, you know, $5 million. You may not have, you might not have a dollar in your account, you know, but your, our, our value of who we are as people has to be based on sonship with God. Amen. God values us as as his creation but then he also values us as his sons and daughters and so if we believe that scripture that said he's going to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory in christ jesus then we have to trust in that now this doesn't mean we get to be frivolous and that we don't do be good stewards of things because i instantly just thought about you know just an example maybe you need a house um I know when when you and I, you know, had this house built, first of all, I didn't think we were going to be able to have a house built. I, you know, when you know, you, what was that? Those like mortgage calculators. We did one of those <laughs> mortgage calculators. And at the time it said that we could afford like what a ten thousand dollar home. <laughs> so, you know, what ten thousand dollar home can you get? But we were as faithful as we could be with our income. We trusted God. and when when you know we did our due diligence but it still was all according to god so when this opened up for us to be able to have this house bill for example then other doors started to open there were supplements and things that we um we were able to to get so that we could you know move in this house and so why did i say that because Sometimes we can look and say, I don't have, but God can supply those things. He can open doors, open avenues and channels. And so it really is, we call to him and say, Lord, this is our need. This is our distress. We need a home for our family or we need, we need a new car or whatever it is. And then we call to him and then we listen for his strategy. Again, it goes back to his order. There's an order in how we have to walk things out. And so if God says he hasn't forgotten about us, then he will provide the need. And again, we just have to be willing to walk it out. Like I've been, you know, I need a car. It's been almost two years now, but I've learned to have a peace about that 
and say, Lord, in the right timing, I'm going to get a car. Because to be honest, I don't want a car note. I want a car. I need a car, but I don't want a car note. And so I'm just going to trust that whether I have to, you know, through my business or whatever the channels are, I'm trusting God for that. And so a lot of that is learning to trust his timing, that it ain't going to always be as quick as we want it to be. Amen. So. I just thought that was, you know, I don't know. I feel like maybe somebody gonna be watching this, waiting on getting a house. And I just, you know, the, the Lord just said, share that example. Um, because, you know, sometimes people get discouraged because you're looking at your current condition. Follow the instructions that God give you, but he can turn it around and you'd be surprised at what God can do. All right. Mark 10, 27 says, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, it is impossible, but not with God for all things are possible with God. I think that's a perfect scripture based on what I just you know, shared the testimony that it is. We're not trusting in just ourselves. Amen. This is not about us just doing. So when you want to give up on, you know, maybe it's a business that you start and it's not, you know, it doesn't seem like it, you know, because, you know, something we go, we talk about that comparison thing. So that is one of the tricks that the enemy really uses us to make us want to quit, because you can say, OK, well, you know, Pastor James, you started your business two days ago and you got a million, you know, million customers. I've been trying to do math for a year and I can't get one customer. And so we do this comparison. And so what the enemy makes us look is like. Well, he must have more favor with God than me. So it brings this doubt. It brings this, this rejection. It brings this fear so that you're not even willing to, to step out. And, and, and really what God is just really wanting to encourage us with is nothing is impossible with him. But we almost kind of need to do this. We can compare, and I don't even say the word compare. I can look at you because maybe I can learn some things for you. It's like, okay, his business took off. What what can I learn from him? Right. He probably got some tools that I don't have, so I can learn from you, but I'm not you. And so I'm going to take what I can and lead the rest, but I'm going to walk in my vein and in my lane rather so that I can just become the best at what I could do. But if I'm going to trust God, he said it's not impossible with him for me to be able to accomplish what I need to accomplish. Amen. Um, this passage of scripture, I, I focus on these last few words, which says, for all things are possible with God. And similar to the earlier passage when, uh, when I talked about, you know, need versus want. When, when, when I read that all things are possible with God, I try not to go crazy and say, oh, okay, anything I want is possible with God. <laughs> I, I really interpret that as things that are according to his will. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to understand God's will and everything, and that's the Holy Spirit to give me insight. Uh, mm -hmm. Oftentimes, my, my insight is um, just follow the last instruction that I gave mm -hmm. you and, and keep it moving. Yeah. Because um, we don't always get the, the full satisfaction of knowing everything, you know, God, what is going to be the end, the end result of all of this? <laughs> right. And, you know, being a business person, you know, an entrepreneur, you know, I'm used to like, I need, I, you know, writing a picture, having a vision, a clear vision of, you know, what success looks like and then having a strategy and all these tactics, et cetera. You know, I'm used to that in the, in the natural sense. Right. And in the spiritual sense, I, I, I sometimes have to leave the, the final vision and, and what that looks like up to God. Yeah. Some, and that's just me. Yeah. Because yeah. some people see the vision. They see that God shows them yeah. that. He doesn't always show that to me. He yeah. he, he shows me steps. Yeah. He shows me process and he shows me principles. Yeah. Follow these principles, tell the truth, be diligent, take all of the things that he tells me to take all of the things that he that he's shown me through my life, you know, so that even things that, that I did wrong, learn a lesson from that. Right. So then I'm able to move forward in, in a way that is that is that is along the, you know, the righteous holy pathway. Sure. Um, and then just, just keep going, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just to know that, you know, he's always there, he's always going to be there to help. And when things come up that are like super complex and hard, he reminds me that he's there. And right. he also reminds me that there are other people mm -hmm. that I can call on, you know, X, who is an expert at, at such and such, right. give that individual a call, work with that person, collaborate. So he kind of, creates this this principled process 
you know, pathway mm -hmm. that I have to run with, and maybe not know, you know, I, I might not know because maybe I want, maybe at the mm -hmm. end of my rainbow, I want to see whatever, let's we'll use the $5 million mm -hmm. thing. You know, I want to see $5 million. His might be one, but he's not telling me what that right. is. He's telling me, stay, stay focused. Yeah. Use the, the kingdom godly network. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask people for help. Yeah. You don't have to have all the answers. I am with you and yeah. I'm going to be working with you through whatever. So I have that kind of, that's the way God kind of works with me so that I don't give up, yeah. you know, along the way. And I don't know if that helps anybody because different people yeah, have yeah, different yeah. types of relationships with the Lord. They see crystal clear. God's going to give me A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm like, man, that's great. Go mm -hmm. do yeah. that. Yeah. And if I'm if I'm part of the process to help you with that, then I'm going to do that. As long as God gives me breath and I'm able to help people, I'm going to help them coaching, mentoring, you know, being a, a sponsor or whatever. Um, but he just doesn't give that all to me. He he lets me know that it's good. So I'm just all right. Mm -hmm. God, I know it's going to be good. So I'm going to keep it moving. But you know what? That's the that's the great thing uh, when you talk about, you know, partnerships, because um, we're still talking about how to go on when I want to give up. Right. Sometimes how you go on is you got to let God give you the right partnerships. Exactly. Um, because now I'm a visionary. I see like, bam, this is going to be this, this, and this. But where I get discouraged is it don't get to this, this, and this as fast as I want it. And so um, sometimes I will see the vision and I might even see the steps, but I need a strategist sometimes to come along and partner with me to help me walk that out. So that's why God perfectly put us together because that's really part of, that's our role even in right. the church. You're over strategy and leadership. Right. I'm over vision and education. And so those are our strong suits because as the visionary, I know how to teach you what I see. Right. You as the leadership and strategy, you know how to help come in and put the steps in place, but also putting the steps in place needs people to learn how to do that in terms of following the proper leadership so we work together so whereas maybe if you don't see the vision but God says okay um here's the tools then I can say well here's the vision and you can say here's the tool so some of how to go on is really finding right partnerships exactly. and so my prayer is that in this season for people that we really find right partnerships people that partner with what it is God has for you, whether it's in the business realm, whether it's in ministry, but that we find those right partnerships because they then all help also help support you because now you don't feel like you all by yourself. Um, and sometimes even though it is said with man, it's impossible, but it's, but it's still that it's God. So we're not depending on people. We're depending on God in the person to come and partner with us because then he can make these things happen. Um, and then we don't have to be kind of a solo act. Amen. And I just, I mean, I don't know if that felt like that went totally left, but I just really, when you said that, I was like, wow, God, that just, and then you went on to say that about partnerships. Well, that's what I was thinking that there are times that what God does is he will give us people that will help us. So, yeah. um, and I've had lots of examples, real examples in my life of that happening. Yeah. Um, so when I was in graduate school at, at DePaul, yeah, I had a classmate and like after the first session, um, we we um, we kind of recognized that we had complementary skills. Mm -hmm. You know, I had these skills around equity and organizational change and 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 and, you know, leadership development and coaching. And he had these operational excellence skills, um, Six Sigma and Lean Lean. Um, and so we went to lunch one time and after we had lunch, we was like, man, we could, we could actually form a consultancy, a firm together. Yeah. And so that was like a seed. And, you know, I believe that was God ordained. God, yeah. God knows how to connect you with people. It's just a matter. Are you going to take those opportunities? Because then those are the things that will sometimes help you push through when you want to give up yourself. Yeah. Like, man, I can't do it all alone. I can't, when you get into that space of, I can't, God is probably trying to, prick your spirit to say yes you can mm -hmm. and i will be with you and i will add these things to you right. if you just follow me so to make a long story short both of us worked at two different organizations this was our first time meeting fast forward i want to say three four years mm -hmm. he happens to get recruited to my organization mm. and then fast forward you know another year it's like and i actually tried to 
get into his department. Um, but he said no, because there was something else. He said, actually, I wanted to go to his department because where I was, I was like, OK, I kind of grew out of this. It's time, mm -hmm. to, it's time to do more. And he was like, no, I don't want you to come to my department. You need to be a director. And and so fast forward a year, I became I became a director. And now I'm I'm the central person that brings both of our organizations work together mm. for the, for the benefit of the entire organization. Mm. And so I'm just just to testify, God, if yes. you continue to follow through on where God is leading you, let him lead you, let him connect you to the right partners. You will be able to press through the times when you don't when you want to give up, because to be quite frank before. Um, uh, before he came and 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 another thing within the organization came, I was ready to leave. Yeah. I was ready to give up. I was like, forget this. I'm yeah. done. Yeah. I got to yeah. go somewhere. So yeah. just testifying. God can help you. Yeah. And he'll connect you to the kingdom network resources that you need to help you push through. Yeah. But I, I, I think that was really key. And, I, you know, who knows? This is must be what somebody need to hear um, because we're still talking about how to go on when you want to give up. And right. there are re different reasons. Some of it is life challenges and issues. Some of it is lack of, of the things that you need because you need you got to supply some things. And then some of it is really you need human resources to help you move your vision forward. And I just want to say this, we have to not be afraid Amen. of those people that may be different than us, that may have more than us. Um, sometimes we're always looking for the people that have the same as us. And sometimes you don't need somebody that has the same as you because you're already, you know, proficient in that area. So right. you need somebody that, that has some of the places where you're weak at, because if they're strong, and like you say, you come together exactly. and you, uh, and you actually can help encourage, um, each other. And it kind of reminds me of the message of, you know, with Naaman and, um, the prophet Elijah, Elijah, because they too were, God was using these two different people to make a change in history, to make something happen for not only Naaman, but also something for Elijah. And so sometimes we got to be willing that God will bring some unusual pairings together, but it's for his purpose and it's all for his glory so that we can see the change that needs to happen. So yes. I just, we just threw that in there. Um, so just a recap, how to go on when I want to give up. We know that we can, he's going to answer our prayers. So Psalms 120 and one lets us know that when we're in a distress for whatever reason, the stress is, or the distress is that we can pray, we can talk to God and he's going to answer. He's going to not only answer the need, but he's going to answer by giving us revelation. Um, we also, when we want to really give up Philippians 419 reminds us where our supply comes from. So he's not asking you to be um, the one that does it all. We just not to be, we need to be in position and place, but the work comes through God. And then Luke 12, six to seven was a really reminder that don't give up because God hasn't forgotten about you, that you are so significant to you that he even remembers the number of hairs on your head, how many fell out, you know, because if he knows the number, he even know how many fell out and how many grew back. I mean, he knows that all can. I'm not just trying to be funny, but he, if he knows that kind of detail, don't you know that he's really that concerned about you? And then finally, Mark 10, 27 just reminds us that don't give up because with God, nothing is impossible, that he can do all things. And I like what Pastor James put in it according to his will. So Amen. We pray that this blessed you um, this Wednesday. And then we just remind you if you need prayer um, to let us know. We did have one prayer request um, for a, a sister who's been praying for a healing. And oh my God, I just drew a blank on. Um, uh, let me see. Can see if I can pull it up real quick because I do not want to miss the fact that she did ask for prayer um, um, regarding her healing and uh, regarding um, uh, and problems with her walking. So uh, Virginia, that was her name, Virginia mm -hmm. Edwards. She prayed, asked for prayer. So we do want to hold that up in prayer um so pastor james you want to start us sure father in the name of jesus we thank you lord that through your strength lord you will help us to persevere lord that we can call on you 
at any time, Lord, when yes. we are in distress, Lord, that we can call on you to help us, Lord, through your riches and glory, that we can call on you to help us understand who we are as children of God, who we are, who we are as people that are worthwhile. Yes and that have value no matter what people say, that we can continue to call on you because we know that through you, all things are possible according to your will. Lord, we pray for Virginia Edwards right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would touch her body, Lord, that you would give her the strength, the flexibility, and the the, the, the ability to, to continue to walk, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen her and even those that may be caring for her, Lord, we pray for, for compassionate, competent care for her at this time, Lord. Lord, we're praying for each and every family, Lord, that they will be able to see who yes. you are and how much you love them and how much you are able to carry them and, and to lead them and to guide them, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, to be able to <clears throat> call on you when we are downtrodden, discouraged, that we might have the energy, that we might have the the, the, the power that comes from you, that we might have the, the, the a mindset, Lord, that is guided and led by you, Lord. Help us and lead us in the way of light. Help us and lead us in the way that we need to connect with others, Lord. Help us to partner with those that can assist us and even support us and coach and mentor and sponsor us, Lord. Lord, we just pray that your people continue to be connected to godly yes. people, continue to be connected to the kingdom work, continue to be ones that share the light of God with others, Lord, that they might make a decision to say yes to Jesus Christ, that they might make a decision yes. to be saved and that they would make a decision to be delivered and strengthened and be able to be pushed forward and propelled by your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. And Father, we thank you for uh, just giving us encouragement today. We bring Amen. your daughter, Virginia Edwards, to you, Lord God. And we ask that not only are we praying for her complete healing, but Lord, we're asking you to show her, Lord God, just as she calls out in your distress, you will answer. And we're asking, Lord God, that you would show her uh, if there's some things that you uh, your plan for her, your yes. your your answer, because it's according to your will. So, Father, we pray, Lord God, if there's anything that that that's hindering her healing process, that you would expose that so she would be able to see it. And so, Father, we just thank you right now for being the healer. And yes. we thank you for not only healing her, but Lord God, we thank you for others that are walking through times of sickness that are in need of a healing touch from you. Amen. So we thank you not only for for healing but Lord God we thank you also that I just feel like as we were talking that you really are are dealing with people that have businesses entrepreneurs so we're praying right now for strategies yes. for right partnerships we're praying over business owners those that are business owners we're praying that you would open up the doors and the resources for them uh, father let them not get discouraged because especially in this time when it looks like there should be a lack father you are actually going to open up doors so that there's an increase we also thank Thank you, Lord God, for those that want to be homeowners. I, I just sense that as well, um, just based on the things that you shared. There's some that right now they're looking at their own personal finances and they don't see how this is going to happen. But Father, just like it happened for us, you open doors and resources. We just declare you're going to open doors and resources for your sons and daughters to be able to, to be able to own homes and own uh, home ownership and land ownership. Father, I just even pray for land ownership. I pray that over churches and ministries today, Amen. that they're able to own land um, so that they can make changes in the things that they desire uh, for the kingdom. And so, Father, we thank you right now for all that you're doing in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Bless you all. Bless you. And until next time, remember that um, he will answer your call. God bless.